Hello everybody, it's Mr. Second Amendment. I want to do a really extremely quick video here. This is basic guns for home defense. I'm not here to tell you what gun to use for home defense. I'm just going to be here to show you the advantages and disadvantages of, you know, the three main types of guns you hear people throwing around uh, for home defense. First and foremost, I believe every defensive gun should have night sight capability or night sighting capability. It should have some type of light. Uh, we have that in the form of this AR. Of course, it's unloaded. Uh, we have our Penix or Fenix uh, PD32 right there. Same light on this Mossberg, which is unloaded, my 590A1. Uh, right here, I can actuate that with the pump hand, the reaction side. And then in this case, not my favorite uh, situation for a handgun light, but you know, again, it's unloaded, but it, this is a handheld uh, Fenix light. But at the end of the day, I think a weapon mounted light would be a little better. They all have uh, tritium night sights, or in the case of the AR, I can amp down the uh, light setting on the EOTech. So all three of these have some way of sighting in the night when there is no light and I have a way of actuating. I think all lights should have the ability to either just touch it or you can click it. And I think a light can be an extreme asset, but it can also be a pretty serious hazard. You gotta know how to use it. Moving on to the guns itself, advantages, disadvantages. What's the advantage of a handgun? Main thing about a handgun is doorbell rings at two in the morning. You need to figure it out. Uh, something's going on in the backyard. You hear something. Um, you can slip this in the bathrobe or whatever, and you can easily handle that. You also have portab uh, portability. I think one of the things people don't think about is maybe I'm wrestling with trying to get a screaming kid out of the way. Maybe I'm opening doors. Maybe I'm manipulating things in my environment. And the handgun is going to be able to allow me to basically grab that kid or that door or whatever and start to operate this gun as I'm dealing with something else. And in my opinion, out of all of these, this is really going to be the only thing that you can effectively operate with uh, one hand, essentially, when you're dealing with something. But that comes with a caveat. I think you need to train. You need to have that skill set. You need to foster that. And uh, I think most people probably don't put enough training into firing one-handed or dealing with that under duress. Um, one of the disadvantages of a handgun is going to be the fact that uh, the caliber, okay, handguns generally are weaker when it comes to the different cartridges available. I'm going to quickly get into that. Um, another thing that you can do with the handgun is you could put a suppressor on it in an NFA friendly state and that way it's going to save your hearing. So if there's something else going on in the house, you can hear that. Um, so handguns have their advantages, disadvantages. Last thing on that is I can separate myself too. I don't have this big barrel hanging forward towards the threat. I can push this away from the threat. I can create distance and I can get this away so he can't mess with that and then I can start to deal with it. Um, so that's the advantage of the handgun. Disadvantage, like I said, is a little bit lighter powered and um, that's something we got to deal with. Moving on to the shotgun. Generally speaking, when the shotgun, again, it's unloaded, all right, the advantage here is one shot for one shot. If I only had one shot out of each of these guns and I had to deal with something, I would take the shotgun. Shot for shot, this has the most power, okay, the most effectiveness downrange. Uh, downside is going to be the fact that it's so long, okay. Federal law, unless you have a short barreled shotgun or, you know, your tax stamp and all that, but federal law is 18 inches. So the standard person who's going to get a pump action shotgun, it's going to be 18.5 inches. In this case, in this case, it's 20 and a half if I remember correctly. So do you really wanna be running through a house where you're essentially gonna to have to open doors and grab things and deal with things? Do you wanna be doing that uh, with a pump action, a mandatory two-handed gun with a barrel that has 18 and a half inches hanging off the end? Well, that's for you to decide. You know, it could be a situation where you're in a, we call it the barricade scenario, where, you know, you barricade yourself and you're just waiting and you're telling the guy, do not do not come in and you're on the phone with the dispatcher. You may not have that luxury. It could be a dynamic scenario where you gotta run downstairs, or you gotta run through the house, uh, secure your family, make sure everything's okay. So at the end of the day, do you wanna do that with a shotgun? Well, maybe not. Depends. Okay, at least with the handgun, going back to that, with the light, I can detach the light and I can, you know, potentially illuminate things without having to flag anybody or point the gun at somebody. Um, so I can just do that and I can separate my firing source from my light source. With a shotgun and a rifle, I can't. Okay, so um, another thing is I think this will be pretty good for multiple attacker because one shot obviously is more powerful than anything else out of here. And at the end of the day, if I have to take down one attacker and deal with multiple or additional attackers, I know that that guy initially is not going to be back in the fight. You know, once he's handled with a shotgun, he is not going to continue to play the game. He's done. Okay, so then I have to worry about everything else. I have more security. I have more peace of mind that I've, I've properly, effectively handled that. 
and I can move on to a different target that's trying to kill me. Handgun, uh, there's been many documented scenarios of people, multiple shots connecting on target and the guy runs off and, you know, or he continues the attack, but or he runs off like three blocks later, the police find him, they take him to the hospital, everything's fine. So, you know, again, going back to the dynamics of the cartridge depends where you're at on that. Okay, moving on to the rifle. Uh, just this kind of requires a little bit of a, again, it's unloaded, it's on safe. And uh, at the end of the day, this requires a little bit of an explanation because the rifle that I'm imagining for this scenario is going to be an AR-15 or an AK or a, um, you know, an assault style uh, military pattern carbine or a rifle. I'm not really envisioning a bolt action or a classic hunting rifle or a Mosin or even, you know, an FAL or a G3 or an M1A or an M1 Garand. I'm not really envisioning those rifles. I'm kind of leaning more towards an AK, maybe an SKS, an AR-15, a Mini-14, uh, M1 carbine even, things of that nature. So getting into that, um, generally speaking, when it comes to all three of these, a rifle is going to have the most firepower. Um, a rifle is also, especially a military pattern rifle like you see here, at AR-15, um, it presents an image. Many times in the gun owning community, that's a really bad image and it works against us. However, there are some scenarios where this kind of military looking image or machine gun looking image uh, could work in our favor. And that's when you've got, I think the rifle, especially an AR-15 AK or a military style rifle is going to be leaning a little bit more towards the, the common home defense scenario away from that and a little bit more towards a uh, LA riots, Hurricane Katrina, something insane where it's an extended multi-day, multi-week extended scenario where there's no law enforcement, there's no emergency services, everyone's on their own. There's looting, raping, rob robbing gangs that are just walking around the neighborhood at night and I want to be able to handle multiple threats and attackers. Um, this is kind of leaning towards that. Good side is firepower. Bad side is, again, we got a long barrel. Um, pretty long barrel length to deal with. There's a little bit of weight on the end. That's just kind of how it goes. This, I think, with a pistol grip, you could effectively operate this, and because there's no pump, obviously it's semi-automatic. I could try to effectively operate this one-handed. And if you train, just like the handgun, if you train, you can learn to do this one-handed, um, and there could be a certain situation for that. Um, but at the end of the day, something I did not talk about with the shotgun or the pistol is the penetration, over penetration. Um, with a handgun, in some cases, we've seen nine mils go through walls more effectively than, you know, five, five, six in some cases. Um, definitely the shotgun with uh, buckshot, we're going through walls and uh, we got to be prepared for the consequences if we miss. That's another thing with a shotgun is you do have to aim a shotgun, okay, that does not spread or open up as much as people think. And I think every defensive gun you should be aiming because every bullet you send down range, you can't take that back. And every bullet you send down range has a lawyer attached to it. Just remember that. Whether it's hitting the target or whether it's hitting an innocent bystander or going through a wall, going into the neighbor's house and causing problems, uh, you know, you got to think about that. So... That's why I say you should have a light, so you should have target identification, and every gun should have night shooting or night sighting capability, whether it's a tritium sight, whether it's a, a red dot or something on a low power, whatever the situation, you should have that capability. So hopefully this is some things to think about. Again, I'm not going to tell, you know, I'm not going out there telling people, oh, this is what you should use for home defense or whatnot. I think that that depends very much so on your personal situation, your house layout, where you live, an apartment versus a house, who's in there, what do you have to deal with? Do you have large hallways, big open house? Is it more compact and confined? There's a lot of things that, that go into the decision-making process. Hopefully this video can help just as a basic layout of the, you know, advantages and disadvantages of the different uh, types of home defense guns. So please comment for questions, and uh, there's going to be more videos on this in depth later.